Welcome to Georgia State Football League League. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into Georgia State Football Weekly. I'm Dave Cohen along with Georgia State's head football coach Trent Miles. And Georgia State, tough one in the Georgia Dome this past Saturday. 44-28, coach, the final score uh, to the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Panthers got down early, but as we have said time and time again, a lot of fight left in this football team, and we battled back and made a good game of it. Well, we've got a bunch of good kids that, that want to win and fight every time they go out there. And uh, in the second half, we actually outscored them 21 to 20, but the first half they outscored us 24 to 7. So, you know, we were, we were unable to sustain any drives in the first half. Uh, I know we had the one touchdown on one play, but um, other than that, it was three and out, three and out. Defense on the field for probably 47 plays in the first half, way too much, and uh, just got too far behind. But we battled back. Our kids showed a lot of resolve again, battled back, and got it to 31 21 in the in the middle of the uh, third quarter to late third quarter and just were unable to to stop them and uh, we were able to go down and score again but it's just a little too little too late but uh, are, are very proud of the way our kids are getting better uh, each week again it's a huge jump that they're making from right. FCS to FBS and level of competition and we're finding that out and our young men are battling and uh, they never say die and and they keep going and that's all I can ask right now. You know, when you and I talked last week, both on this show and on the radio show, we talked a lot about Western Kentucky's running game, and we were all concerned about Antonio Andrews. And, you know, as you mentioned, a combination of him as well as Keyshawn Simpson, who really was the thorn in our side, the really strong mm -hmm. short uh, yardage back, coupled with the fact that our defense did spend so much time on the field in that first, in that first half, just kind of wore him down a little bit. But it was Simpson more than Andrews, I thought, that was a, that was a little bit more of a yeah, problem. They, our defense, for the most part, did a good job in the first half of containing a a Andrews. But uh, again, they were able to crease us a few times. A lot of it had to do with the fact that we were on the field too many plays, too many three and outs on offense. And, and uh, some of it had to do with, with were the uh, gap responsibility, filling your gap mm -hmm. uh, with some young guys that uh, uh, we're asking to grow up in a hurry. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights. Again, it's Georgia State and Western Kentucky. Georgia Dome in Atlanta. And, uh, Coach, pretty good crowd in the uh, Dome for Saturday's game. And uh, right away the kickoff goes to good old number five. Well, I thought uh, our guys did a great job of covering on the punts. That was actually a punt. D. Matthews did a great job of getting down there. There you see a controlled offense throw to Avery Sweeting for a first down. You know, but definitely not enough of them there on defense. Got a great job by Alan McKay getting in and getting a sack, caught, forcing a fumble, and we weren't able to get on it. Coming back and making a long throw here to Robert Davis. He makes a great job of staying with it, concentration, and uh, getting the ball, you know, catching the ball, uh, scoring a touchdown. This is the thing that we cannot do. Uh, we can't get in there and, and celebrate on our own, draw attention to ourselves. We have to celebrate with our teammates. Uh, again, here you see Ronnie scrambling, coming out of the pocket and be able to make a throw and complete for a first down. I think that's Avery Sweeting again. Coming back on defense here, and, and uh, they ran what you call middle, fullback middle. Uh, they were able to bluff our linebacker and go right down the middle, and, you know, and quarterback was able to make a throw to him. Here we have uh, Jonathan John Bart making a good run up the middle. Again, we got into a one-back, no-huddle offense, and we're able to move the ball more. Uh, here we got a completion to Albert Wilson, and this is right before the half. Uh, I was told by the official on our side he was out of bounds, so I didn't use my timeout. But the clock continued to run, and we, we felt like we should have been able to get off another play. Here you see a really great play by Brent McClendon coming over on the post route, coming in front of the receiver and making the interception. And then here a really nice catch by Dan Williams, who is our captain uh, for the game on offense, going up and getting the ball at his highest point. And we'll come back again, and Travis Evans trying to establish some sort of run game and getting things going. And we'll come back here and throw the ball to Avery Sweeney. He goes up, makes a nice catch, get the ball down inside the five-yard line. And then we were able to cash it in here with Travis Evans scoring uh, from about the five. Good game for Avery. Five catches, 71 yards. And he did a nice job. Then we'll come back here and get Paris Lee involved, making a nice catch. And uh, we able to get positive yardage for a first down. Coming back and Ronnie being able to scramble. I think that was a fourth down play. Been able to get us in the, in position to score. Then coming back and getting a uh, inside zone to uh, Jonathan John Bart, being able to get it in the end zone. 
They called him out, but after a further review, they, they found that he was in the end zone. He did a great effort getting the ball in and coming back and, you know, actually had him wide open on the, on the post, but didn't get enough on the throw, didn't step into it, and under threw the ball and uh, threw an interception there. And then they come back and kind of put the nail in the coffin with the uh, touchdown in the corner. We were still able to continue to keep fighting, being able to get the ball to Albert. Does a great job, gets a good block there by Paris Lee. Albert being able to turn the corner and get a first down and get out of bounds, save us some time, and then come back and throw a strike here to Avery Sweeting for a touchdown. Then being able to get the onside kick. So we're still, we're still breathing. A great job there by Dan Williams causing the fumble and uh, Paris Lee jumping on it. And uh, We weren't able to, to convert off that series, but it's a great job seeing our kids can continue into battle continuing to go out and try to, to uh, stay in the game and, and find a way to uh, give ourselves a chance at the end. 44-28, the final score. Just a couple of guys I wanted to con uh, comment on quickly. Jonathan Jardenbart, I thought, ran the ball as hard as he could, and Avery Sweeting coming up with uh, some big catches. Avery did a good job, uh, was able to make some good catches and uh, scored a touchdown. He's got some really good quickness, and we're trying to make sure that Avery's you know, developed and is around here uh, in the future. And then uh, Jonathan really did a good job of running when he can. He's got to sometimes learn to uh, get the ball in the outside arm, but he tries to finish his runs and did a good job of getting in the end zone. And, and uh, one of the screens he was wide open on, we were unable to get it to him, but uh, he's really playing well. All right, we'll uh, talk more with uh, head coach Trent Miles as we move on throughout the show. We'll get back with more right after this. You're watching Georgia State Football Weekly. We're back on Georgia State Football Weekly and pleased to be joined right now by a big defensive end, Theo Agnew from Windsor, Connecticut. And yep. uh, Theo, great to have you with us. And, great to be here. Uh, tough season, but uh, you know, the one thing that we've noticed about uh, this Georgia State football team week in and week out, practices are spirited, practices are tough, and uh, no matter what the situation is, mm -hmm. Uh, and there's probably no better example than the Western Kentucky game this past right. week. You guys are fighting till the, till the, till the very end of the game. Yeah, uh, one thing that's pretty much remained consistent with us throughout the entire year is, you know, we're going we're gonna to bring the right attitude. We're going to, you know, come, come to work every day. Um, things happen. The season didn't go, isn't going the way that we wanted it to. But, you know, we just got to keep on, keep on grinding, keep on coming with the same excitement, the same love and passion that we have for the game. As one of the seniors, you're a redshirt senior at this football team, and um, have you taken it upon yourself with a number of young guys getting yeah. a lot of playing time this year to kind of assume one of the leadership roles on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, I believe I have. You know, um, I think that just naturally it, it happened that way for me, and being that I'm one of the older guys too. We, we got a lot of young guys on this team, and they, um, they're stepping up uh, pretty well. You know, especially, you know, you have our, our defensive line. Um, you had uh, Shawanye who wasn't able to play this game. Um, Carnell Hobson, uh, Tanner Strickland, Jalen Lawrence. You got a bunch of guys that are just in the mix right now, you know, and um, I think they're handling it well. Um, me and uh, Big T, I feel like we, we're leaders on the defense. We kind of help them get them going and just make sure that they're confident, you know. They're great players. They know what they're doing out there and that they don't begin to second guess themselves as the game goes on. Yeah, all those freshmen that you just mentioned getting a lot of playing time this year. And as I said, you in that leadership role, but do you see them even looking towards you for some yeah. leadership and guidance when they're on the field? Yeah, definitely. I mean, because um, sometimes tough things happen and then, you know, you get a guy who kind of hangs his head a little bit, but then I, I make eye contact with them. You know, keep it up. Let's go. We got to let it go and move on to the next play because I know they're going to turn around and do something great the next play. And they got to know that too. Downside of the Western Kentucky game, at least in the early going, especially that first half, defensive unit spent a lot of time on the yeah, field. Yep, yep. Uh, somebody told me we were out there. I, I don't even remember what the number was, but it was it was a considerable number amount of time. Yeah. And um, but you know you can't dictate the game. Uh, one thing that we always say is that defensively you can't dictate how we get on the field. We just control how we get off. So that's us. We have to stand up for um, third down. Third down has to be it. Yeah. Has to be the money down, as we like to say. So. You know, it, it happens, but you can't control that with, with playing defense. Now you're in your second year at Georgia State, so you were with us uh, last year in the one and only season in the Colonial. How much of a difference right. have you seen as you're facing these opposing, uh, opposing offenses yeah. from what you saw last year to what you're seeing in the first year through the Sun Belt? You know, uh, the thing about the CAA, the CAA is, is a great conference, and it has talent. But from game to game, it'll go up, down. There'll be peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. with, with the Sun Belt, 
everybody's good. You're going to get a, a 330, 315 pounder every, every game, yep. you know. So it, it's just a, a different mental thing. You got to be on your P's and Q's all the time. You have to be on, on the top of your game because it's not going to be a week where you can, where you can kind of relax. It's not going to be a week where you can just step out there and just do whatever. You got to be disciplined. You got to do what we practice because in, uh, in the Sun Belt, you can, you can get exposed. If you, don't, if you don't do what you practice, if you don't do the way that, the we, the way that we've worked, uh, if you half step, then somebody's going to expose you, you know. So. Seems like every week, every opponent, there's at least one or two kids that they're talking about, oh, this is an NFL caliber yeah. player. We saw that again this week with, uh, this past week with yeah. Andrews. And of course, Keyshawn Simpson and ended up being the real problem for us in the short yarded situations. Right, right, right. But, you know, again, Antonio Andrews, another guy there, you know, they're talking about being able to play at the next level. Yeah. You guys are having to go out there and, and slow down and stop these guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that, that's the, a big thing with the, with the Sun Belt and Division One as a whole. You know, like I said, with the CAA, you got good players, but uh, this guy's going to get a shot. This guy may or something like that. But when you got, when you got guys every week, somebody's going to go to the NFL with every team you play. You know, one guy, two guys, maybe a group of guys. Maybe the, the O-line is really good. Maybe the receiving core is really good. That's, you got you to gotta play, play like you're trying to go to the NFL, play like you're there now because that's who you're going against. You're going against some of the, some of the top talent. Yeah. Again, we're talking to Georgia State's defensive end, Theo Agnew, here on Georgia State Football Weekly. Again, you transferred to Georgia State after yes. starting your football career at the University of Massachusetts. Just yes. tell me a little bit about your background. You're from Connecticut. Yeah. And just where your love of football kind of developed. Um, well, I'm originally from New York. A lot of my family, that's, that's what we originally were. And then uh, we kind of spread out from there. So, you know, we moved to Connecticut. Uh, it was a little, bit, a little bit of a change from New York to Connecticut, but it is what it is. And then, um, you know, I can remember uh, I started playing football when I was in the sixth grade, and I was chubby. And I remember uh, one of my best football memories, best and worst, is that at the end of practice, we would always take a sprint around the field. And I was always the guy, the last guy that the, uh, all the other team just has to, to clap me in, you know. And I had to take my asthma pump. It was crazy. But, um, you know, I, I got to high school at uh, Northwest. I went to a Catholic school. And then um, it, really, it really began to, to just grow inside of me, I guess you can say. Um, I just began to love it. I began to, it, it consumed me and I consumed it. You know, it was just football, football, football. Right. And then everything, you know, they, they always use the analogy, football is like life. And um, I noticed that once things went right with football, then things began to go right with everything else. It began, began to be my life. It was a part of the routine. So, um, you know, once, once that picked up, and it, and it taught me so many things. Taught me about work ethic. Talked talk to me about there's just so many things that kind of helped me, help me develop as a young man. So I feel like at this point in my life, you know, I'm going in my last three collegiate games, and um, I played a lot of football, a lot of football since I'm um, sixth grade. And uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. You know, I hope to continue to play this game, but if this could be my last three, you know, it's like wow, you know. So yeah. uh, that long journey comes down to these last three games and what I do, so it's a lot. Well, Theo, it's been great having you with us here the last, uh, last season and all of this year, and uh, best of luck the remaining three games. Let's, let's try to go out of here on a winning note, and yep. uh, we'll be watching you. Thank you. All right, I want to thank Theo Agnew joining us here on Georgia State Football Weekly. On the other side of this break, we're going to talk a little Georgia State baseball with head coach Greg Frady. We're back on Georgia State Football Weekly. It's our Inside Athletics segment, and it's brought to you by the parking spot. And, you know, just as it starts to get cold, what better time to talk about baseball? And we welcome Georgia State's head baseball coach, Greg Frady, to the set. The reason I say that is because when you know it's getting cold, you know it's going to be warm right after that, and baseball is going to be kicking in. But, you know, just like all the sports coach, there's really not much of an off season, and you guys have been very busy uh, getting ready for, uh, for the oncoming campaign and the, and the first trip through the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, that's right. And, and even now, we still have this week to go, and then the November 12th is our professional scout day. We've been going now. This makes our 12th week since school began, and uh, it's been a lot of great work, a lot of good progress, a lot of excitement. Uh, I think we've got a very solid veteran team. Uh, that's really great to say, considering the last two years I've been talking about youth, youth, youth. But right team has matured and it's an exciting time. Well, a 35 win campaign last year certainly gives you a nice springboard out of one league and into the new one. Well, absolutely. And you know, most of the players on the team from last year returned. 
And I think it's a natural process to think, well, we won 35 last year. Well, we're going to win more this year. But the reality is, is that we're going, we're stepping up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our slogan in 2014, which will be the spring, our, our 2014 season, I think it's going to be Georgia State baseball stepping up in 2014 because that's really what we're going to have to do. Even though we won and we're very proud and happy with the way the season went last year and the development and maturity of our players, but the schedule is so much more difficult. Not just in conference that everybody knows how solid the Sun Belt is being a, a number five ranked RPI league last year in the nation, but our non-conference schedule is really challenging. Uh, in the first week, first two weekends, we've got the University of Illinois at home, going to be a top pick in the Big Ten, and Ole Miss on the road for a three-game series, going to be a top pick in the SEC. And it's a great challenge to our, our players. But I think we've got the team that if we play well and we perform well, our schedule is going to give us the RPI that we need to make a, a, a run here at, at what we're trying to accomplish, which is being postseason. Yeah, and as usual, you'll play... Uh Georgia once, you'll play Georgia Tech twice, keeping some of the other in-state rivalries uh, uh, on, the, on the burner. Um, you know, you talk about all the guys that return. Let's talk, let's start out with the pitching staff. Matt Rose back, is, is he really the top of the order right now as you head into, uh, head into this season? He, he's been so impressive uh, this fall. He, he's been pitching well, he's been hitting well. He's just been the elevated player that we thought he was gonna be played great for us last year, but he's just on a completely another level. We, we're counting on him to be one of our weekend rotations. Of course, Andrew Fessler returns. He did a great job for us last year. Nathan Bates returns. He pitched on Friday night a lot for us last year. Garrett Ford returns. He was our Saturday starter last year. And then the new addition of Tyler McClure, a left-handed weekend possibility. Kenny Anderson, uh, a weekend left-handed possibility. Uh, we just have more options within our pitching staff. We've got eight left-handed pitchers. And it gives us an opportunity as a staff to match up, which we really hadn't had that luxury in a, in a while. And uh, I think our, our staff's having a good fall, getting a lot of experience, playing a lot of innings, and getting a chance to see them. I think our challenge as a coaching staff is to get everybody in the right places. Solid at the plate as well. You've got Josh Merrigan back. You know, great out, and had an outstanding freshman season. Uh, as did Matt, uh, Chase Raffield, Chad Prane, Caden Bailey. I mean, you got a lot of, a lot of bats coming back to that lineup. You know, well. keep that rolling. Greg Bowder, Chris Triplett, right. James Clements, uh, and, and then a couple of new guys. Trey, Trey Sweeting, a freshman. Uh, Ryan Blanton, a freshman. Zach Moon showing things at times. Uh, putting some things together as a freshman. David Levy now comes in as a really good defensive shortstop to give us a, a, an option if we need to make some moves and a good runner. We're, we're, even though we had a really solid offensive team last year, we're even more balanced with more options and uh, can match up again with right-handers and left-handers. And I'm excited about our team. Our team has really hit the ball well this fall. What are your plans uh, behind the plate? Who's going to handle the, the bulk of the catching? Well, I'm glad you asked that because we didn't even talk about Joey Roach. He, he's quiet, unspoken leader of our team. He's tough. Uh, it was real loss for us last year for Scott Surratt to go down to injury. But with that, Joe Roach got the chance to really step up and play on a regular basis. Well, that experience and that time behind the plate is now really paying dividends. And Joe is going to be our starting catcher. There's no doubt about that. He's a good... A good, uh, a good option from a defensive standpoint and running the staff, a toughness, and then he's been very good offensively too. And uh, Trey Sweeting will be uh, there and Zach Moon, uh, young guys providing some depth. But these guys are very, very talented and all of them bring something special. Joe is leading that group. You know, you mentioned a minute ago about, uh, you know, the jump out of the Colonial into the Sun Belt and how, the, you know, how well the Sun Belt ranks. Obviously four teams to NCAA regionals last year. Um, your non-conference schedule, did you do that a little bit by design in order to up, up the, you know, the, the uh, challenge a little bit to get ready for conference play? Well, it is by design, but with that said, you know, nothing works out perfect in scheduling uh, because you have to schedule so far in advance. Sometimes you don't know how your team's going to be. Like, for instance, I'm scheduling right now for 2016 and 2017. Well, I think I know what we'll look like in 2016, but if the professional draft takes our players or our signees are drafted and they sign, I won't know. Right. So there's times that you are overscheduled for the team you have, sometimes underscheduled for the team you have, and then in that perfect storm, you have the right team with the right schedule. I really feel good about this year's team. 
with that schedule, they're going to be challenged at every turn. I mean, literally, this is going to be an unreal challenge. However, we got the personnel, I think, that can handle it. Uh, I think we can't get caught up in, are we going to win more games than we did last year? We just need to play at a more higher, consistent level because every game is going to be a game that uh, we'll have to play well to win. Well, Coach, appreciate it, and uh, already looking forward to uh, looking forward to getting past the winter and getting uh, getting into the baseball season. But uh, thanks again. We'll look forward to uh, 2014 Georgia State baseball. Thank you. All right. I want to thank uh, Head Coach Greg Frady, Georgia State's baseball coach, stopping by. We'll get back with more right after this on Georgia State Football Weekly. This portion of Georgia State Football Weekly is brought to you by the Parking Spot. We're back on Georgia State Football Weekly, our final segment in this week's show. Again, talking with uh, head coach Trent Miles and uh, coming into an off week this week. Again, a tough loss in the last outing to Western Kentucky, but off week comes at another good time. Second off week of the season uh, for this team. It comes at a time we really need it. We're yeah. really banged up right now. You know, offensive line, we haven't been able to put the same five out there probably the, the whole year. And uh, defensively, we're really banged up at linebacker and safety. So we are going to use the week to get healthy. Uh, we'll, we'll approach it differently than we have in the past with bye weeks. Bye weeks in the past have been more fundamentals and you know doing some scrimmaging to get the younger guys developed and con continue player development. Uh, this week we'll use to get healthy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to get these guys back and get them, get them ready to go. And in two weeks, go out and play Louisiana Lafayette, and who's the first place team right now, and, and see how it goes. I guess at this point, you don't do as much on the field considering the situation injury wise, but can watch a lot of film and kind of catch up uh, with everything you do inside the building as opposed maybe to outside the building. Yeah, we'll do a lot of meeting, do a lot of mental work, um, allow our guys to do a lot more academic work. But at the same time, we will go on the field and, and do the things, you know, from a timing standpoint that we can keep our timing. But we'll, we won't do it in pads, we'll do it in helmets and shorts and, and try to uh, refrain from contact so that we don't lose anybody because. Again, we're down to two linebackers and six offensive linemen. So, you know, we've got to be really smart with how we handle this football team, you know, in the, in the rest of the season. All right, Coach, appreciate it. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you right here next week. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Louisiana Lafayette next up on the schedule. Yes, I'm just going to focus on our team this week and then start worrying about them the next week. All right, for Coach Miles and our entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching Georgia State Football Weekly.